Okay. All right. So we've got Mark here. Um, he is a owner of a strength and performance gym. Sorry, my phone was about to drop. <laughs> I'll start recording again. But yesterday I dropped this. Um, <laughs> and it took me 290 quid to repair yesterday. And my phone. No, not now. Yeah. Started Hold on tight. Oh, God. It's horrible. Anyway. Get some chalk on your hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Take two. So hi guys, uh, welcome to this case study. We're here with Mark, who is one of my new clients, um, and he's been running a campaign, uh, relative sh relatively short, um, but he's had some good success, so I thought we'd get on a call with him. Um, so Mark, welcome. Hi, Ali. So tell me about your gym, tell me about you know, the, how, what you do at your gym, and uh, you know, how it's kind of relevant to the people watching. Okay, yes. Yeah. So um, I opened the gym about six years ago. Uh, it's a strength and conditioning facility. Um, when we opened, uh, my whole goal and aim was to train athletes, which I'm sure is uh, the same as a lot of people um, after watching uh, plenty of YouTube clips and following different mentors over in the States. Uh, but soon realized it wasn't really applicable uh, or very, very difficult over in this country. And you end up training a lot of general population, which is absolutely fine. It's not a problem. Um, but it sort of changed the way we did things. That being said, uh, I've had a lot of pro and elite athletes come through the doors. Um, and I've probably trained more elite athletes in many different fields than anybody else in the Worcestershire area. I mean, I wouldn't stake a, a promise on that, but I, I think it's fairly accurate. Um, after four years, four and a half years, we moved facilities. We're in a bigger facility now, so we started. But when I very first started, I was doing boot camps outside. Then I um, I moved to my own garage and uh, and driveway, so just a single garage and driveway. Then I found a thousand uh, square foot facility, and now we're in a two and a half thousand square foot facility. So we've had nice steady growth. Awesome, and then. Typically, how was you kind of getting clients before working with myself? Yeah, so uh, a lot of it was word of mouth. Um, I had one or two. Uh, I started with a boot camp, um, and that was a uh, an under 14 rugby team. My, my son was playing for the team, so I was started doing some some strength and conditioning with those lads. Uh, I had one or two of the parents question about doing some. Um, personal training with them and I started building up and they started mentioning friends and it was a lot of word of mouth I did some I had my Facebook page um, which I didn't boost or, or anything like that but people were starting to to pick it up and follow it and, and stuff like that and we just had steady growth through organically really yeah and um, I, I, I very rarely paid in the early days especially for for any sort of Facebook ads because I didn't really know what I was doing anyway what what was the turning point for you that you just said right? I think I need I need some help. What was what was that turning point? Yeah, so um, I decided I need some help last year, really uh, early part of last year, and I was looking around for I was looking around for a business mentor, and I found one. Um, great guy. Uh, his business model is something that I think works, but it didn't work for me. It didn't, didn't suit the way that I do things. He wanted me to, to really focus on small group training of up to eight people, but really provide a, um, a high ticket price, 12 week transformation. Okay. Um, it made things a lot paperwork and stuff like that. But what it did do is I ended up losing a lot of my clients um, and we went from 45 to 50 members. Uh, I dropped right down into the into the 20 something members, um, and that hit me really hard. And then I realised as people were dropping off, and not all of them were because of that. Some was just organic drop offs, people moving away, yeah. pregnancy, change of jobs, and stuff like that. Um, but what really uh, sort of struck me and and was that I wasn't enjoying doing. 12 week transformation because yeah. it was something different to the way that I ran the strength and conditioning classes before, yeah. but B people were, people really loved what we were doing before and we were, we were, we were doing all right. Um, and I thought this would take me to the next level and it sort of kicked me in the butt. Um, so I wanted to take things back to how, how I was doing before. So I, I've now got two signature programs. 
Um, but because we lost so many people, I definitely needed a lead generation. I needed to get people in. Um, and then I can, that's the way I want to run from now on. I want to sort of build up doing what we were doing before and then take it to the next level past that. Okay, cool. Awesome. And I mean, just kind of like a word of warning for anybody who's watching and thinking, oh my God, 12 week transformations might not be the way forward. It, it's down to the individual business owner. Every business is different. Um, I previously with my gyms, which is, is pretty close to yours actually, isn't it, Mark? My, one of my yes. gyms. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, we did 12 week transformations. We did 28 day transformations. We did, you know, indoor boot camp, so larger groups, but we also did semi private. It just depends on the owner. It's completely down to the atmosphere, the community, all those different things. And with your type of gym and your type of training, um, I think the route that you're going down is, is by far the better option for you. I think down to the individual business rather than just picking a model and trying to replicate it finding something that you like, you enjoy, and you know that works as well is going to be yeah. pretty good for you. So that's pretty cool. Um, and it's some might sit, see that what Mark has done as a, a mistake or, or anything like that, but that is business. He, he failed very smallly on something, but if he hadn't have tried it, he always would have been thinking, if I do that one thing, am I, um, and never tried it by the way, is he always going to look back at it and thinking, is that going to work? Is that going to be, is that going to be the thing that takes my business to the next level? The fact that you had the balls to go and try it and do it and you risked a lot and you lost a lot. Now, you know, that's not the way that you want to grow the business. Now, you know, this is yeah. the surefire way that you want to grow the business, which is, which is the clarity that you now have in, in the conversations that we've had for your lead gen. There is so much clarity there. Like I know what I need to do for you. You know what you need to do in terms of the sales and converting these leads that we get you. Um, and that's why you've had really good success with this first campaign that we've gone ahead with. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I'm well aware that uh, there's a lot of mentors out there that are pushing this, this high ticket price, uh, and small group training. Um, what I found personally was the size of our facility. If you're only using, you've only got eight people in there and you're trying to do this, this small group. Um, we lost a lot of atmosphere and a lot of the, uh, a lot of the fun part of it and, and the sort of really buzzy atmosphere sort of dropped out and that's just starting to come back now with um, with these leads that we're now bringing in. Um, I used to really love the coaching and I started to really fall out of love with it a little bit because it just wasn't as much fun. There wasn't, uh, there wasn't the atmosphere in there. Everything just seemed quiet um, and that could be a personal thing for me. Uh, I know there's plenty of people having a lot of success with that business model. Yeah. But it just didn't suit, suit me. Uh, and I'm much happier with the way things are going there. Awesome. Cool. I'm just going to plug my phone in. Uh, sorry, my laptop in. We'll edit this bit out, so don't worry. We're just on six. That's okay. I'm going to let my dog out. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> funny uh craig who was doing his uh interview earlier and he, he had his dog with him started barking it must be me they must be <laughs> all right cool we'll get back to it now okay cool so um let's talk about the, the most recent campaign that we've had we've actually had and i like to be transparent with people your your particular account <clears throat> has probably been one of the most difficult ones that we've had to try and get approval for facebook in all of my yeah. history and I'm proud to say this, in all of my history, I don't get ads um, not approved or anything like that. We won't talk about the reasons why, but basically we've, we've, we've had to go backwards and forward with Facebook. And because I've known how to play Facebook and how to, when things aren't getting approved because of a certain page um, or whatever it might be, we know a way around it. As an agency, we can get around it. So this campaign that we, how long did it take? It took about three weeks to, to get, it took, it took a good three weeks, yeah. And I'd just like to say at, at this point, it, it was my fault because I asked Ollie to do something that he sort of said to me, I'm not sure about this, it's probably not the best way. And I was quite I was, I was quite pushy and said, I really think this is the way I want to take it. I was completely wrong. Ollie was right. It kicked me in the arse because I didn't have any leads or anything happening for three weeks. But we're back on top now. Yeah. So a good thing there, listen to Ollie. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that. I, I, didn't, I didn't kind of fish for that. I was just, 
you know, I, I no, you didn't fish for that at all. No, but I, I, I'm aware that it, it kicked me in the backside, uh, being a little bit pushy on that, and yeah. uh, and sort of saying this is the way I really want it to go. But yeah. uh, I was wrong. Yeah, and all it was was a certain wording, and I know that sounds weird, but if we use certain wording that Facebook, um, you, do you want need to let your dog in? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, fine. <laughs> carry on. Um, I'll, I'll just keep talking. So um, if we play by the game or by the rule of Facebook. They're going to play with us and they're going to give us a lot of lead out on things. And because Mark's account is really new, where it starts to, they'll, they'll really look on it. But as you spent more money with Facebook, Facebook start becoming more lenient. So if we'd done what Mark asked probably in about 12 months' time and he'd already spent a lot of money with Facebook, they probably wouldn't even look at it. Um, but because it was such a brand new ad account, um, they, they kind of look at things a little bit more. But, you know, the other thing is like, it is partly on me because I, I allowed it and I, you know, I'm always up for testing and that's what marketing is, is testing as much as we can. Um, but the, the great news is the adverts been running about, I think about 10 days off the top of my head without looking at things. Uh, yeah. I need 10, 10 or 11 days. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got 54 leads so far. Um, now typically I set the goal of whatever the amount of leads that we look to get through, we want to always try and convert around about 10% of those leads. So if, I would deem a good, uh, and I'm saying this for you as well, Mark, just so you know how well you've done. Like if you'd converted five people, I would have been fairly happy with that. But you converted, was it 10 or nine? Uh, we've, we've got 10 with three I'm expecting to convert today. And I've, got to, I've spoken to them. Uh, they've, they've asked me to phone them back and I've got somebody coming in to see me later. So I'm expecting by the end of play today to have 13. Perfect. So 54 leads. By the end of play today, it'll be 13 new people on a paid trial. Uh, so this is not like a free trial. This is a paid trial and they're paying, what is it, £49 on that? 65. 65. So it'd be 650 quid if it was 10 people. So you've definitely nailed 650 quid, um, but it'll be seven, eight £800 by the end of the day, something something like that. Yeah. Um, that was yeah. really bad math, but yeah. Um, so yeah, basically pretty good campaign on this on start, which is really, really good. So any kind of tips on helping people convert these leads? So let's say for instance, someone takes me on and go, Ollie, we need leads, get our, get our business leads. We can do that. But it's always this part they're struggling with. Since you're doing so well, what, what advice do you have on converting those leads? Uh, so on the system that, that I've got with you, I, I get the emails. You've, you've set up um, uh, an autoresponder on the emails. I then get an, an email with the leads name and phone number uh, and the email address. I'll, um, what I have been doing, I've been phoning um, almost straight away or as soon as I've seen them. Most people, to be fair, don't pick up straight away. Um, what I normally do there is send them a text message, introduce myself on the text message, say, hi, um, thanks for applying for a, a forward transformation program. Um, when's a good time for me to give you a call? I'd like to just to, to discuss the, uh, the program and you can ask any questions and then we can we can move forward from there. Um, and that is all I've done, and then I've had people text me back. Not everybody does, of course. Um, some people will text back and say, I'm sorry, I've changed my mind, um, even before I've spoken to them. Um, but out, out the one, that, that those ones have all sort of texted me back. I haven't yet spoken to anybody um, that has changed their mind uh, or hasn't joined us. I've, everybody I've spoken to yeah. has come on. Uh, a lot of the people that I haven't spoken to or only by text, one or two of those have changed their mind and, and or haven't been able to get hold of. Nice. Perfect. Good job, dude. You, you're killing it. You're doing really, really well. Um, even with the staggered start, but I could even tell that you're just like, you were raring to go. And that's why. I was uh, like, yeah. I, I, yeah. I just wanted to get that. You know, I, I, I kept messaging you just to say, are we up and running? Are we up and running? What's happening with Facebook? Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I was really raring to go. Yeah. Um, and even when we got started, it, it's, it was quite slow for the first few days. I was like, is it, is it really on there? Is it not on there? Yeah. Um, uh, and then it just, it just sort of exploded. Yeah. And on average, I'm getting seven, eight leads, I think, a day, something like that, yeah. round about there. And you're only doing, we're only doing £10 a day on advertising it as well at the moment. So, yeah, I think we looked at starting at five and, and, and I soon went up to, up to the 10. And yeah, I, I, and I'm prepared to push that higher if we need to push that higher. Yeah. I'm not afraid of 
um, spending the money on that because I know that it's going to come back. I, I've changed my own mindset that it's not a cost, it's an investment. Okay. Um, and that's taken some, some sort of change in my own mindset. Um, I had to spend quite a lot of time after the problems I had last year just regaining clarity on the whole thing and am I doing the right thing, am I not? And that took a lot of my own sort of um, hard thinking and, and trying to work out what I wanted, what I needed. I also had one or two injuries and problems which which played with my head as well. Um, but it all, but it all this, but, is, this is the weird thing in like being a fitness professional, what people don't understand is that they expect us to be high energy, high at it all the time, to be 100% healthy. But, you know, I had my illnesses just like you've had yours. Um, mm. this business. It's, it's stressful. It's hard. And yeah. this is the real world. And this is what people don't actually talk about in our industry is the impact, the mental pressure that it puts on us and the, the physical pressure that it puts on us to, to run these businesses. Um, yeah. It's really hard. So when you bring... It's not yeah, when you bring someone in to do a job like myself, it takes so much pressure off so that you can yeah. focus on doing the stuff that you love. Absolutely. And I didn't have the technical know-how to do what you do. Uh, and I knew that that's somebody I needed to find. And I sort of searched around. And one or two people, had, I'd seen your name pop up here and there. Yeah. Um, and that's why it was like, I sent you that message. We spoke, we met up, we had a, we had a coffee, yeah. uh, and it was like, yeah, dude, let's get, let's get going, let's just, let's just smash this. I'm, I'm, I was really confident that you could deliver what you promised, um, uh, and yeah, um, we're, we're good, we're working well. Cool, that's perfect, man, awesome. Dude, thank you for your time, really appreciate it, and if, if anybody needs to ask Mark any questions about myself or just any advice on you know, sales or whatever, running business, drop Mark a message as well, super nice guy. Yeah. Doing- good stuff um in strength and you what's these strength meetings that you do these these strength camps because i've noticed you've not asked me to promote one yet which is interesting but tell me about what you're doing there because that's quite seems quite cool yeah we've um i've, I've got uh, i've got one of my clients only one um but he's uh, he's an amateur strongman he's yeah. entered a couple of competitions yeah. um and we've got some strongman kit and there's, there's very very few um facilities in, in the local areas of me that have got any sort of strongman kit yeah. so we've started putting on some workshops um i did one last month i'm doing another one in april yeah. uh, it's a three-hour workshop we're putting on getting people to have a go at using bits of kit such as atlas stones and yokes and logs nice. things that you see on, on tv on the world strongest man and stuff like that yeah. um truck pulls as well but people don't often get the chance to have a go at it even a lot of my own clients i've got the stuff there but we don't use it as, as part of our general um, programming. So I've started putting these workshops on. Uh, we've actually got the runner-up of the UK Strongest Man coming uh, to our next workshop in April to uh, give some hints and tips and to come and join us. So that's pretty cool. What's the date on that one? 8th of April. Awesome. Okay, cool. So um, if you want to get hold of me or Mark on that, just just let us know. And, you know, they're just, I'm guessing, what's the, you got a number that they can call or anything like that if they want to do that? Yeah, yeah, my number is 07930-753-784. Give me a call on that. It's, it's, only, it's a three-hour workshop from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock. It's on a Sunday, um, and it's only £10. I'm not trying to make uh, big money out of this. I'm just trying to promote some strong man, and then hopefully people will enjoy it if they're local and maybe come and join us um, and come and join us more regularly. Um, it's, it's, it's not a big campaign for me to try and, you know, uh, in, increase sales on this. It's just to get a bit of awareness that this is something that we do, um, and people might, you know, come along, give it a go, and say, oh, "I really like what you do. I like your place. I would like to join," which is a great bonus. Awesome, wicked. All right, mate. Really, really appreciate it. Um, thanks for your time, and keep working on these leads. That's awesome. I will do.